Hello, I'm Pastor Janet. Susie is not with us today for Sunday School, but we're still going to try to do something kind of fun and to talk about God because that's the most important thing. Well, today our music is stuff we're, we have done before. I'm just going to put some of those videos on so that you can listen to some of them at the beginning and at the end here. And we're just going to do that because I don't have another musician with me today since Susie moved to Minneapolis. But uh, we will get some more music together for you for another day. But what I want to talk to you about today, I've got a couple things to talk to you about. Well, first, I've got a couple things to show you. I have right here some, it's called um, Mott's, uh, Mott's Fruit Flavored Snacks, Assorted Fruit Flavor Snacks. So I'm gonna take some of them out here. We call them fruit, fruit snacks in our house, kind of, or fun fruits, we've been known to call them. There, I dropped one of them too. Hold on just a second, I dropped it. All right, okay, so these are fun fruits or fruit snacks, whatever you wanna call them. If you look at them, they have shapes on them. They're kind of like fruits. That one kind of looks like grapes and that one, I don't know what that one's supposed to look like. This one kind of looks like a strawberry. Kind of, it's got, you see, it's got the little things there, like a strawberry. I think this one, oh, I think this one's supposed to look kind of like a carrot, actually. You see, it? it's got a bottom like a carrot and a top. Um, and then there's one yellow one here. And I think it's supposed to look a little bit like a lemon. Anyway, they're fun fruits and they have different um, flavors. So they look a little bit like fruit, fruit and they taste a little bit like fruit, but are they really fruit? No, obviously they're not. They're candy. And we know that they're not really fruit if you look at what goes inside them. You can read on the back of it. I can't read it, it's upside down there. You could read on the back of it, on the back of it, it says things about what goes into a fun fruit, right? And they are not all fruit, believe me. There's a lot of really crazy words that, um, besides sugar, <laughs> that go into them. Things uh, that have to do with them being preservatives, or preserved. So, what is really a fruit look like? Well, I just happen to have a fruit in my refrigerator. This is a clementine or those little bitty oranges, they're called cuties, but it's actually a clementine, they called it. So what's the difference between those things and this thing? Part of it's the size. That's much smaller than this. Part of it would be the taste. These taste like candy, right? This tastes very sweet, but it doesn't taste like candy. It tastes like a clementine or, a, or that orangey taste, right? It's sweeter. Um, just these are sweet like candy, but this is like the real fruit sweet. This has got a lot more liquid in it, like the juice in it. It's got more stuff you can chew and it's got more stuff that's good for you in it. This is a fruit that was made by God. This is a candy that was made by people. Well, we obviously know the difference, right? We're not going to have your parents say, oh, you need some fruit with that meal and give you any of these. No, that's not going to happen because nobody thinks these are real. But there are times in life when there are things that seem good and seem real that aren't really. There are times when it can be very confusing and you can wonder, well, what is good and what is bad? Because some people are telling you this is good in the way to be and other people are saying, no, no, this is good and, and you don't really know. Well, as people of God, we have something to be able to know. We can turn to our Bible or to our church or to our pastors, the, the uh, people who teach the Bible, and we can learn about what God says is good and what isn't good and what's real and what's not real. So today, because of that, I've got a book that I'm going to read to you. It's called, If You Give a Boy a Bible by Andy Holmes. So, front page, if you give the boy a Bible. 
Okay, so the first words are, if you give the boy a Bible. I'm gonna stand up so that you can see the pages good while I turn. If you give the, a boy a Bible, well, he may ask you to read it to him. And while you're reading it to him, he may want to sit on your lap or lie on your back or hang upside down halfway on the off the couch while you are reading it. Well, when you get to the story with a fight scene, uh oh, you see this one? This is David and Goliath the giant. Now oh, he throws the rock at the giant and the giant falls down. That's a story that's from the Bible. When you get to that point, he may want to act it out. And so the boy is at, he's Goliath and the dad is like, he's David. He may uh, make up his own ending. So in his own ending, David gets, the giant jumps on top of David and ties him up. <laughs> it says, or then just when you think you're safe, he may want to act it out all over again. So the dad's taking a rest in the hammock and here comes the boy, Hi trying to act like David and the Goliath and some of those fight scenes in the Bible, because there's a lot of them. He may feel sad when you read the part where Adam and Eve just disobey God. See, that's Adam and Eve, and there's the angel that won't let them go back into Eden ever again. When you read a story about Bible bandits, you might need to keep a close watch over your shirt, your, what is it? Oh, shish kebabs, because he's a bandit. He's going to steal the things he really likes, just like the Bible bandits did. Shish kebabs, hard word to read upside down. Oh, look at him. He's flying at these animals, right? And it says here, uh, he may like, or he may act like a baboon when he discovers the story of Noah floating, or Noda, Noah and the floating zoo. So he may start acting like a baboon and hanging from things. Hearing that Joseph's brother sold him to a group of travelers for a, from a distant land may give him ideas, new and temptations to overcome. So see, he might want to sell his brother just like they sold their brothers. After you read him the story about Moses and the 10 plagues, see Moses and the 10 plagues and some of them were frogs. He may collect frogs for a month. See, his, his mom's up on the counter going, ee, get them out of here. And the Moses crossing, the Red Sea story, may inspire him. See, there's Moses and the people crossing the sea. May inspire him to try a red Kool-Aid experiment in your neighbor's hot tub. Uh-oh. His neighbor is not very happy as he tried to make the hot tub the Red Seas. And once he learns the story of ba Balaam and his talking donkey, Balaam and his talking donkey, that's he had donkey that talked to him in the Bible, he may try to interview his iguana Izzy. And this says on him, and finally, which kind of pizza is best cheese or pepperoni? And his little Izzy is going, eep. And after you read him the story of Rahab and Joshua's two spies. You see Rahab, she's up here and she's letting the spies down out of the, the place so they could be safe. You may never have a private moment again he's trying to be a spy. He's acting like he's a lampshade over there. Tip. If you have a tuba in the house, uh-oh, he says, skip the story about Joshua blowing the walls of Jericho down <laughs> because they, they walked around and they blew horns 
and the walls fell down. So you don't want him making the walls of the house blow down. Did I do two there? I, just, I did do two. Okay. If you give a boy a Bible, he may learn to be calm when the night uh, light goes out. He may even, he may be kind to others, even when they're not, when they're mean to him. And learn to trust a friend who's there when no one else is. If you give a boy a Bible, he just may discover that a great, big, wonderful God loves him more than he could ever imagine. Who knows? Maybe after reading him the story of Daniel and the young friends turning down a king's feast for veggies, he may actually want to try broccoli for himself. The kid's face. Or maybe not. But he may want to share these stories with his friends. And if he shares the stories, he may want to give that boy a Bible too. The end. I always think that's a cool story because it talks about what learning about the Word of God can do. That learning those stories can teach you what is right and what is wrong and how to act. That's why we have Sunday school and that's why we teach those stories to kids. So that when they have things in the world, they can know what are things that God made and what are things that people made up. Oops, I dropped one. <laughs> and know good from bad and right from wrong and be safe and be kind and be good and know that Jesus loves them. I hope you enjoy our singing and we will see you again. It will be a couple weeks before we see you because next week is Palm Sunday and the following week is Easter. Okay, we love you. Stay safe. Be safe, be smart, be kind to each other. This is number 677, This Little Light of Mine, 677. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I
you are the light of the world, you are a city on the hill, you are a candle in the dark, and you are a star in the sky, are the four verses, but and everything else is the same in it, so it'll be easy to follow along. Our song is Standing on the Promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ. 